Now let's see if we can figure out how to um, subtract two vectors. So I'm going to actually sketch in the vector u here again, or hopefully something that looks pretty close to it. Well, that looks about right. And now if I want to um, subtract u and v, so in other words, if I'm trying to compute here, let me actually write it. We're trying to compute u minus v. <clears throat> we can just define this to be u plus negative v. So if we were thinking about what minus v looks like, let's go ahead and sketch that in here. It should look just like v, but pointed in the opposite direction. Let's try and get that right on the end of it. There we go. So I'm going to try and make this again look exactly like V, but pointed in the opposite direction. I think that that's looking pretty good, or good enough at least. So <clears throat> the, the last piece here is to put in U um, minus V, and that should be these two here connected head to tail. Right, and let's just go in and label all this stuff. So this here was u, and this was minus v, and again we added them head to tail, and the resultant of adding these two head to tail is the vector u minus v. So moving forward is what our goal is, is to find a, a different way to think about these vectors. So right now we're, we're thinking about them only geometrically. Okay. Um, but is there maybe another way we can represent these vectors? And so that's what this next part's gonna be about. There we go. So a blank is a vector of length one. And so just like our unit circle being radius one, a unit vector will just be a vector of length one. So I'm gonna write that in here, a unit vector. And then we have two very important unit vectors. And actually there would be a third one if we were in 3D, but we're just gonna be thinking about this in 2D. Vector I, is the unit vector whose direction is along the positive x-axis, while i is the vector, unit vector specifically, whose direction is along the positive y-axis. And let's just make a little sketch of this, see, see what this looks like. So if we were to maybe just start off with our axes, let's do that. Here's our y-axis, and here's our x-axis. And let's say we were to label 1 and 1, so about right here. then the vector i, the one along the positive x-axis, looks like this. So again, that there is our vector i. And remember in boldface, right, you, or uh, when you're writing i in print, because it's a vector, it needs to be in boldface, but by hand, right, we'd write i, and then actually, because this is a special vector, we're not gonna write this above it, like we were doing with the other ones. We're actually gonna give it a hat. This is gonna be I hat. And one more here. And the vector J, this is the one that 
runs along the positive y-axis, or runs in the direction of the positive y-axis, and it is notated j hat. Okay. And that's all this next thing here is telling us is, you know, we write these um, bold face in, in text, but when we are writing by hand, this is again i hat and j hat. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth are these two vectors important? And there's a good reason for it. Let's find out what it is. And we're going to make another sketch. We're going to draw on a set of axes here again. And maybe I'll move this one down. Here we go. That looks like a good spot, and we'll put in our y-axis as well. There we go. And let's put in a point here, a comma b. So maybe we'll call this b, and maybe this over here a. And so this point that I'm talking about would be right here a comma b and is what i'd like us to do is think about the vector that starts at the origin let me actually sketch that in here vector starts at the origin and it ends let me make a better sketch of it though i want it to end at the point a b All right, and now, now we're going to figure out why i and j are important. So I want you to know that we could, uh, let, me, let me see what color I used up above. Use green there. So if I were to draw in this vector here that goes from the origin to A. And let me see if I can get this, get one note to behave here. There we go. So we're going to take this, this green vector here and add, let me see what color I used up above for J. Use this purple color. does not want to work. There we go. So if we were to add this green vector and this purple vector, the resultant would be the red one, the one that we were talking about going from the origin to A comma B. Well, it ends up that these two vectors that I just sketched in here have really simple representations if we're thinking about i and j. In fact, i, right, is just supposed to be the vector of length 1 that points in the direction of the positive x-axis. Well, we would like a vector that points in the direction of the positive x-axis, but to be of length a here. So how could we write that? Well, that is equivalent to a times the vector i. That would give us this green vector here. And this purple one here should just be b, the number b, times the vector j. And so what that means then is that the vector we were looking for, v here, it can just be rewritten as a times the vector i plus b times the vector j. And so if we have a vector that starts at the origin and we know where it ends, then we can rewrite it using i and j. Okay, so any vector that starts at the origin can be rewritten in terms of i and j. Now this might seem like a problem um, 
that you know we, we can do this with um, ones that start at the origin but what about ones that don't start at the origin what do we do then and we are gonna find out on the next page and before we get there I want to talk about a couple more things but we will figure out what to do when it doesn't start at the origin how do we write it then okay so vector V from 0 0 to a comma B is represented as a I we already wrote this, but AI plus B times J. A is called the horizontal component. And B is called the, the vertical component. And one thing that can be uh, pretty interesting here is we could have some real life situation that's being described by um, vectors, okay, or vector, maybe vector equations. And we sometimes can solve that problem by just looking at a single component of our vectors. So if, if we were maybe talking about some sort of um, object that's moving you know up or down let's say but it's also moving left and right we might be able to solve some problems by just looking at that vertical component we may not even have to worry about the horizontal or vice versa okay. um, and that's why we we're giving names to these things because we will refer to them quite a bit and sometimes we'll just look at one but next here uh, we have the magnitude of v and notice all we have here with V is we really have a triangle with base A and height B. So we just use our Pythagorean theorem to get the, the length of the vector V. And this is just going to look like the square root of A squared plus B squared. So it ends up if we write our vectors in terms of I and J, we can find their magnitude really easy. And it'll also end up, we can find what direction they're headed very easily as well if they're written in terms of I and J. And if they're not written in terms of I and J, we're going to see, well, it's really easy to write them in terms of I and J. Example 2, sketch the vector 2i minus 5j and find its magnitude. This is as easy as it sounds. We want to sketch a vector that starts at the origin and ends at two comma minus five. So go over two and down five. So two, three, four, five, there we go. And I am just going to connect those two points with a vector. Maybe, let's try that one more time. There we go. Okay, so there's our vector, 2i minus 5j.